Emily Sauer. I'm with the San Antonio Public Library. Um, I'm a training officer. I'll explain a little bit what that is. And I'm with their adult basic education program, which is the LEARN program at the San Antonio Public Library. And uh, Daniel Gomez is our volunteer uh, extraordinaire who uh, works uh, at the Bazan branch on San Antonio's west side. Um, he leads our ESL book club, which I know it, most of you are interested in, all of you are interested in, um, and we're going to talk about that uh, in just a little bit. Um, I want to give you a brief overview of what the LEARN program is. Uh, I know you're probably more interested in the details of the reading club and how it works and the selection of texts, so we will be emphasizing that, but I think it's important to see how it fits into the model of uh, the LEARN program, okay? And we'll have time at the end for questions. So just very briefly, I don't want it to be death by PowerPoint. Um, we'll start by talking a little bit about the LEARN model. Uh, the LEARN philosophy, what is our mission and how we accomplish that. Some of the services we offer as well. And then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about how we came up with this idea for an ESL book club, uh, what the purpose is of this group. Our student population, we have a very diverse student population. Selection of books for the club, uh, the class routine, how, uh, how a book club session uh, develops, and then we want to give you some basic components to take into consideration if this is something that you're interested in uh, replicating or tweaking for your own literacy programs. Um, Okay, so the LEARN program is located at four different branch libraries of the San Antonio Public Library System. Uh, we have a location on the east side, on the west side, which is where Daniel and I uh, work, on the north central and south side as well. For those of you who are familiar with San Antonio, the west side is a predominantly uh, Spanish-speaking area. Um, on the east side, we have a predominantly African-American population. South side, uh, primarily uh, Spanish-speaking population. And our north central location is really a mini United Nations, uh, very, a very diverse uh, group of students. The LEARN partnership started about two years ago. It's a partnership between the public library system and the DHS not the Department of Homeland Security, um, the Department of Human Services for the city of San Antonio. And our mission is to, the program's mission is to respond to adult basic education needs, uh, specifically the obstacles that are standing in the way of adult learners uh, achieving their educational goals. Um, Daniel and I are not experts, we're not trying to represent ourselves as experts. This is really just an experiment that we started about six, seven months ago. And it has generated a lot of interest among our my ESL students. Um, so Daniel's group is really growing every week, which leads us to think that um, we're providing a valuable service and he's definitely responding to, to a need that's out there. Um, we have a lot of new individuals coming in every week based on word of mouth recommendations. So that's really what motivates us. When we talk about uh, the LEARN philosophy, basically we're all about access. Um, and when I say access, there are three main components of that. Um, all of our services are free. There are no registration requirements, so we don't need to see your driver's license. We don't need you to uh, give us your address. There are no registration requirements whatsoever. 
Of course, we encourage people to get a library card, but it's not required. Okay, what we found is that if we do our job well, it happens organically because the student, the adult learner gets excited about learning and wants to check out books and DVDs and uh, then they come and ask us how they can get a library card, but it's not a requirement. Another way that we focus on access is by having a staggered schedule among the four learn centers. At least one learn center is open every day of the week. Um, so if someone works from Monday to Saturday and they need ESL instruction, uh, they can go on Sunday to the Cortez branch on the south side, which is open. So every day of the week there's at least one learn center <coughs> that's open. And when we started this program, we didn't anticipate um, there being so much interest in a Sunday ESL class, but it's one of our most uh, popular sessions. Okay, so as far as the services we offer, yes? I'm sorry, I just had a follow-up question. That yes. Sunday course, is that in all those neighborhoods you spoke about? It, no, the, the Sunday schedule is at the Southside location. Mm -hmm. Okay, each Learn Center has two staff members and the DHS uh, staff member provides three main services. Uh, about 75%, well, maybe 70% of their time is spent uh, doing financial counseling. All DHS staff who work at the Learn Centers are financial empowerment counselors. Uh, so they can help patrons they refer to them as clients, the librarians refer to them as patrons. They can help them get a copy of their credit report, correct mistakes on their credit report, set up payment plans. Um, so for a lot of our patrons who have been, who have taken out payday loans, uh, a lot of times they can counsel them on how this affects their credit and, and let them make um, better choices moving forward. I know this is small, probably Did you for the. Yes, ma'am. Four of the branch libraries, too. Uh, we have 27 branch libraries, soon to be 29, and four of them offer this program. Um, strategically located so that all uh, areas of the city are. Covered, but yeah, in some cases, people need to travel. Um, yeah. Uh, is I'm not familiar with any other library-based programs that are similar in the state of Texas. But I'm not a librarian, like I said, um, or I didn't say that. But my background's in education, I'm not sure, to be honest. And DHS is Department of Human Services? Of the city of San Antonio, yes ma'am. As far as the um, services provided by the training officer, I'm not going to go over each of these, but I do want to mention that there's an important distinction between facilitating, guiding, and training patrons. Uh, of course, our title is training officer. But we don't just train patrons. We facilitate, which for me means providing a patron with the tools that they need <coughs> to um, reach whatever their educational goal is. That can be recommending an ESL software, website, uh, setting them up on a TOEFL um, CD for them to practice on the computer. Uh, we guide, guide it being a little bit more hands-on. Um, the library has a database program called Learning Express, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Um, it has a resume writing program built into that, so we can help patrons to use that to make a resume. Or it also has a GED prep software. Um, so when I say guide, you know, that's a little bit more hands-on. Uh, we can guide a patron to decide, for example, which GED subject test they want to present first, okay? 
Um, San Antonio Public Library. Yes. It should be capitalized, but the trendy thing, I guess, is to make it all lowercase. Yes. These particular services are from the training officer, me, which is library staff. Mm -hmm. Do you have a phone number for the San Antonio Public Library? Uh, that runs this program? Yes, I, I can get you that for okay, the. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, when we talk about training, uh, that's even more hands-on. Training can be showing someone who's never used the computer how to hold the mouse, right? And to be perfectly honest, in, many ca in some cases, we actually do do. Um, and by that I mean uh, we have patrons. I'll give you an example. An 85-year-old woman who came in the other day who needed to set up an email account as a prerequisite of placing an order with... Uh, the penitentiary uh, commissary for her son who is incarcerated. Okay, she was not interested in learning how to use the computer. Uh, she had no practical, um, she had no interest in learning how to use the computer, but part of this was that she needed to have an email address. So in <coughs> cases like that, the training officers use their professional judgment to um, you know, set someone up with an email account or uh, help a uh, senior citizen who needs to fill out a uh, housing authority application for housing voucher. Um, so those are not really situations in which there's a need for ongoing uh, a, a tutor to be accompanying you. It's really just a one-time service. And very briefly, before we move on to Daniel, um, could you back it up with just real quick, just a second? Thank you. Sure. Got it. Okay. As I mentioned, we're really just trying to respond to the whole learner uh, rather than focusing on a specific academic component. And that's where our ESL book club uh, comes into, surf comes into uh, consideration. We really get to know the students on a personal level, uh, more than just patrons. They're, you know, they become friends. Um, we, on an average day at our branch, we probably see about 15 to 20 individuals. Um, at the North Central branch, they probably see about twice that number. But most people, you get to know them on a first name basis. Um, a lot of students uh, come to an ESL class and feel comfortable and enjoy the, the services we offer and then they come back for uh, financial counseling, right? Which of course is completely separate, it's confidential. Um, as an ESL teacher, I'm not you know, also learning about their finances. There's no overlap in that sense, but yes? Is that by appointment? Okay, so the financial counseling is by appointment. The training officer services are not by appointment, they're drop-in. Yes, in a set schedule, exactly. So they have to call ahead to set up an appointment? Only for the DHS one-on-one -on -one individual counseling, the financial counseling. Otherwise, they can just drop in and we work with them. Yes, yes. Yeah, so the DHS staff has a financial empowerment counseling certification. Um, I don't know exactly how many hours of training that requires, but it's very extensive from what I've seen. They, it was uh, a training that they did in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Okay. Financial what? Financial empowerment counseling. Certification. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so Daniel is going to talk about how the idea for an ESL book club came about and how it really fits into this model of trying to uh, meet the students' needs in a holistic way. Did someone have a question? Yes, ma'am. So your role is to be there and you have a set schedule. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I have uh, four 
sessions that are actually scheduled throughout the week. Um, and then in addition to that, we have drop-in hours where students can just drop in like, oh, I have a job, I have an interview tomorrow, I need to make a resume, and I can help them. Yeah. Being drop-in has its own series of complications because sometimes we have a million people and sometimes you know, there's no one, but um, that's something that we've learned kind of trial and error. Um, one of the most popular sessions that we have is the Saturday morning ESL group, which meets every Saturday morning. Uh, we've had the same, I've been with the same students for the past year and a half. Um, of course, some of them cycle in and out, but uh, that's the group that Daniel works with in his book club, which he's going to explain. Okay. Is breakfast? No, but we did order, we got, uh, miraculously, we got approval to order um, one of the big coffee urn coffee makers, so we do have coffee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Daniel, I'll let you take over. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Any more questions for Emily? We you can ask at the end, too, that's fine. Because my, my part... Uh, do you have Yes, yes, I can give you that. I have that up here. Yes, yeah, at the end is all my contact information, so you can definitely contact me. I have business cards here as well. Thanks. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so as Emily said, my name is Daniel Gomez. I'm a volunteer at the Bazan Library where Emily works. And I started volunteering in January, so going about seven months now, and I'm just really enjoying it. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, background of how it happened that I fell in. I, I was a member of another book club in San Antonio. Um, book clubs are really popular right now. Yeah. I don't know if, if anybody's in a book club. Mm -hmm. If you're not, join one. It's really fun. It's a fun way to share the love of reading with other people. Um, it's not so solitary anymore. <laughs> um, so um, I really enjoyed that experience and I wanted to start one at my local library instead of having to go across town. And um, so I met the librarian, I met with the librarian and he introduced me to Emily. And uh, he said that was a great idea. So I uh, was about to start my, I thought I was gonna start a Spanish reading book club because I thought I wanna practice my Spanish. And uh, however, <laughs> as I met Emily's students, they said, we don't want to read Spanish, we want to read English. Um, and I thought, well, that's strange, because they, their English uh, ability was kind of low, but yet they wanted to read in English. So I said, okay, let's try this ESL book club. So that's what ended up happening. And, um, but I was all prepared for my Spanish book club, <laughs> you know, and so I had to come up with a new plan, a new reading material. And so I'm just going to give you, you know, uh, some information of what I've, what I've, um, what I've come up with. Um, so that's how the reading club started and I discovered, I found out that these people really wanted uh, to start reading in English because they, they know the basics but they wanted to practice their reading and they also wanted <coughs> to practice conversation, their conversation skills in English. So this gives them an opportunity to do that. And um, it's really nice, I had one lady who, even though she's like in her 60s, she said this was the first time she actually completed a book in her life. So that was a very good experience for her. Um, the makeup, of the, the population is pretty diverse. We have people mainly from Mexico, but also other Latin countries. And we've had some students uh, from South Korea, mm -hmm. from Somalia. Um, just all over, really. You never know who you're gonna have. And they'll be in San Antonio, because San Antonio is a military city. We get a lot of military people that are stationed there for a while, and then they go. Um, and so there are all kinds of countries. Their age ranges from 20 to you know, 60, 70s, um, different backgrounds in education. We can have in the same class some people who dropped out of elementary school. Um, sitting next to someone who has a master's degree in, you know, in some university in Mexico, and yet their English level would be at the same. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Uh, do you have certification to treat, teach English? No, I'm a really? volunteer. Okay. I do not have. I have a bachelor's degree in, in humanities from the University oh, of okay. Texas. Yeah. What's your background in? Um, I worked for the San Antonio Independent School District for a few years. So I don't have a teaching certificate, but I actually was thrown into the classroom yeah. every week. Yeah. <coughs> what did you teach in the classroom? I taught every subject because if any, any, I, it was like, we need you. It's uh, San Antonio Independent School District is the largest in, uh, school district in San Antonio. And they're just short. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I, I got a job as a clerk. <laughs> I got a job working for the office, you know, and I thought I was going to be in an office job. But they needed help in the classroom every single week. So every week I was covering for a teacher or, you know, trying to help. So I got some experience that way. Did and I learned math? along the way. No, I didn't cover math. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's see, where was I? Okay, different population with different uh, uh, backgrounds. So an issue that we had was you know, this wide range of, of uh, reading level. And so trying to find the text was a little difficult. And the availability of the text is another problem that it came up with. There's, we're using the library system, but there are only so many copies available of each book. And, uh, so it took a long time of researching to try and find books um, to, you know, to see what, how many copies we had of each one. It, sometimes they're able to order more, but most of the time they're not. <laughs> Again, you know, we're limited to funding and so forth. So, so I have to, we have to just work with what we have. And so what we decided to go with were the uh, graded readers. And I'm sure you all you know about graded readers. So that's what we're using. No, I don't. Where's the graded readers? Oh, okay. A graded reader looks like this. This is an example. This one is the Oxford Bookworms. And this is our primary one that we're using. And it's actually working out very well. Um, a graded reader means that it's a, a book that is, has been um, revised, written for the ES, specifically for an ESL uh, student. So the sentences will be shorter, the vocabulary will be a uh, you know, lower level. So even though you have a classic like this one, The Call of the Wild, it's been, it's been condensed. No, no, they, they actually rewrite it to make it in simpler, simpler language. And, and the students are enjoying these. So there's the, I, I recommend the Oxford Book Burns. There's also Macmillan Readers, uh, Penguin Readers, and there's a series called Who Was and Who Is. You know, but th those are also nice, and these are about famous people. Do you have those at the library? Yes. Do you use Reaping Book? Repeat? Repeat? I'm not familiar with those. They're used by reading recovery uh, teachers. This would be the other ones. Okay. They're repeat. Readers, but Write that one down. <laughs> yeah. Repeat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, okay. Well, we have found that the reason we use these is because um, there were more copies available of them. It just made it easier. Uh, for example, let's say we have eight copies, um, but we might have ten students, so sometimes they have to share but we do let them take the book home. So it's like a book club where you can read on your own at home and then we come back and we talk about it. But at the same time, we spend some time reading. We'll actually read the book together. So it's a little different from a traditional book club. It's a mix of uh, different, strategies. different strategies. Yeah, depending like on the needs. a reading circle and a book club. Yeah. What was that other book that was mentioned? She said repeat. Repeat was the name of the book you mentioned? It's a publisher. Can I? Let me write it up here. How do you spell it? R I G B Y. R I G. Oh, Rigby. Rigby. I, I heard repeat. Cool. So, Great. Really yeah. They're, they're like. They're more expensive 
they're like these. They're, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Without a library card, do you check them out and are responsible for them? Uh, no, I, we do not. If, um, if I can answer that. Uh, the library has a policy where you can get a temporary card even if you don't have um, a uh, address just in your name and they limit you to checking out five books. We also have a card that we kind of circumvented the system a little bit and we put it as like a book club card so that students can use that to check out books. Um, so far we haven't lost a single book. We've been doing it for six months so. That's but that. the beauty of it that yeah. really hone in on it and yeah. cherish that book. They keep it. They yeah. need it to practice. They, they really do. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question for you. What's the Rickley full name? Do you know the full name? Uh -huh. Publishing house? You'll find it under the course of the Okay, thank you. I don't really know. So these books are not the students. They have to bring them back. Yes, they have to bring them back. They don't belong to the students. These are yeah, from the library. They're just loaned to them. Okay. Sure. Uh, the good thing about these books is at the very back they have um, a list of vocabulary words that you can use to go over and they have um, exercises in the back too. On, on the, all of them? On all of them, yeah. Yeah, um, you can go to these websites also, and they'll, they'll, give, they'll have a list in each of them there. Uh, there's quite a few. Oxford fo focuses on classics. Um, the Macmillan has a mix of classics and newer titles, like by um, Michael Crichton or um, like James Bond novels or any, you know, things, stuff like, like that. So those are nice too. And then the Who Was and Who Is series that focuses on um, famous people, biographies, like, like who was Martin Luther King or so forth. What about the Penguin readers? What's they focus on? Um, Penguin, uh, classics mainly. The who is and what, who was, if I can just add, they also have the what was. Mm -hmm. So you get That's some, um, like they have what, what, what were the Twin Towers or something mm -hmm. like that. And you get the whole cultural background, which can be really interesting for our population. You have a couple, a couple yes, of questions. Uh, yes, sir. What we're using the li public library system, yeah. and they're really helpful at this library. So they, uh, the librarian there and Emily uh, will search the San Antonio library system, have the books uh, mailed over or shipped over to our library so that they're available when the students come in. Okay. And then when they're done with them, we send them back out. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, readers, should they focus on the classics and what else? Uh, there's all kinds. Uh, all kinds. Okay. There's yeah, all kinds. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, do you select the book before the book comes in, or do the students help? Um, I'm I'm usually selecting them only before time constraint. Uh, but mm -hmm. but I do try to let the students like I'll, I'll try to get two copies or two different you know, books and and have and say okay which one would you like to read mm -hmm. next and try to get them a, a choice. But but unfortunately, we are uh, limited to what's available. So I can't just say, you pick a book. <laughs> OK, um, what else? Let's see. OK, so what we do is we meet for about an hour. So far, we've been meeting an hour on Saturday mornings after um, Emily's class. And we uh, break it up to about half and half of a reading, half of reading and half conversation and activity time. We don't want them to read too long because of the attention you know, span. It might, it might be too much for them to go on for such a long period. So we usually try to read one <coughs> chapter together. And if we, either we read it together, taking turns, or we listen to the audio, because many of these books come with a CD. Mm -hmm. And we'll listen to the audio. And they really like listening to the audio, too. And it's relaxing. And they get to hear a, a very good reader pronouncing words very <laughs> accurately. And so they can learn the proper pronunciation. And it's also relaxing. Yes. Yeah. So we'll listen, or we'll take turns reading. And then we'll open up for discussion. And um, we'll take 
about three to four weeks on a book. It takes about that long to get through one book. So we have to have another one uh, ready ahead of time. Three to four weeks? Three to four weeks to go through a book, yeah. To, even though they're little, that's about how long it takes for them to, to go through it. Um, because we're only meeting once a week. For one hour? For one hour. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the basics, uh, basic thing, if you're, if you're thinking of doing an ESL club, you know, something like this. Basic components. Um, one is, um, you know, things to keep in mind, uh, a variety. Uh, a variety of uh, subject matters. So I try to mix up the subject matter. A variety of protagonists, um, so that you have some female protagonists and some male protagonists, um, and you have some nonfiction books mixed with fiction books. The students really like nonfiction. They like both, but uh, nonfiction is uh, you know you, they can relate to a little bit more because it's reality, of course. So. Um, How about comics? I tried comics. Um, I liked comics. When I first learned Spanish, I, went with, I started with reading comic books. I pretended I was a little kid. And, you know, and, uh, but comics didn't work out too well. Um, these, I tried the Oxford Bookworms. They have comic, the, the beginning level. And uh, what, I, what I didn't like is that they uh, truncated the story too much. And so it was hard to follow. It was really difficult to, for them to understand. Even I had a hard time understanding because for the comics, they just took out too much of the story. Yeah, so they didn't, we didn't like them. We tried a couple of them and you know, did, didn't work out. Um, what about chores? Oh, hold on. Well, are, we, are we right there? <laughs> so, um, are you still on variety? Yeah, variety. Just one thing to keep in mind is avoiding routine. You know, throw in variety so that you're not, you're not Sticking to the same thing over and over again, you know, I just, that's just something that I, you know, you have to keep in mind. I don't want the kids, to, the, the students to get bored. Um, and then a choice, that means allowing them to have a choice. If you can, um, let them choose the, the material that, uh, that they can read, if, you know, if it's possible. And you can also, what I do is uh, have them choose the activities that we do after the reading. For example, um, these books will have lists of uh, sentences that you have to put in order. So that's one activity they could do. Or they can have an activity about uh, find, the, find the, the word that's wrong in the sentence. You know, they can look for that or dif different things like that. So, so those books have activities Yes, they do. And, and also these, um, I'm going to turn it over. Each of them, uh, they have websites, and they have more activities. They have more activities uh, in their websites. And the Macmillan Reader's Guide, uh, that's this one. I actually printed it out so you could see it. This is um, full of activities, like half of this. is just nothing but different ideas of what you can do, um, games, uh, you know, imagining what happens after the book, try to pretend, you know, what, what, if the story were to go on, how would you, you know, what kind, how do you see the story going on? Um, just all kinds of things here. So it's, you, know, you can get a lot of ideas from the, this one's called Using Graded Readers in the Classroom. And I printed that off of the Macmillan Readers website. One Stop English, if you're not familiar with that one, it's excellent site and lots and lots of uh, free stuff available there, free lesson plans. So I'm learning, <laughs> learning about these great sites. And there's a lot of free stuff out there. Um, just like one-stop English, there's another one for busy teacher, which is really good. Busy teacher? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know about that one. B-U-S-Y, busy? B-U-S-Y, yes. I'm gonna put that up here too. Busy teacher. Okay, um, 
so let's go on to the reading level. That's a, that's a big issue. So to, hi, to try and find a reading level, if you're not familiar with the, uh, the student's reading level, have them uh, open up to the first page, read a, read a little bit, read a paragraph or two, and see how they do. See how many words they, uh, they don't know. Get a count of how many words they don't know. And uh, that'll give you an idea. If, if there's too many words, if there's one or two, or maybe three words that they don't know, they can, it'll be a comfortable reading level. But if there's more than that, it's too hard for them, and they're, gonna, they're not going to be comfortable. It's going to be frustrating. Yes, sir? You said you have a pretty diverse group. I, I suppose that applies to skill level as well. So possibly yes. you choose a book, and some people know some of the words, and some people don't. Know. Right. So I'm having, yeah, because of that, I'm having to uh, go below the, read, to the lowest le reading level. We just, uh, it's just a decision that you have to make. You can't, you can't uh, t attend to everybody's needs. You know. Yes. Yes, we go over the words, the vocabulary. And it's good for those that um, are already at a, a more advanced level. It's good for them to repeat, and they, they still, still have some questions, too. I'd like to recommend the Berenstein Bears. They're for elementary school. There's a series of them. I had six or seven of them, and they're, they're full of joy and happiness yeah. and things. But you could try those. And, um, sure. and they do all kinds of activities and jobs, and, and it was a lot of That's fun. Right. I like reading yeah. it. My son enjoyed hearing it. An another popular series you could try is Hank the Cow Dog series. Hank That's the Cow Dog? Hank mm -hmm. the Cow Dog. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. Hank the cow dog. Um, so, let's see. Uh, so you want to remember to keep the the, um, the reading enjoyable. You don't want to make it too difficult. Um, and what else? Books. Um, other books, like if, if you find other books, you come across other books in the library that are geared towards children or young adults, most of them will list the reading level somewhere on the book. Um, if not on the back cover, it'll be on the inside. Um, on what kind of books? Pretty much any book, almost. Not all of them, but most books that are geared towards um, children in, in school, in some school level, you'll, you'll find a school level, a uh, school reading level listed on there, either grade one, grade two, grade three, and so forth. Yeah, reading level or interest level? A reading level. Reading level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Adult I wish there was, yeah, I wish there was something similar for adults. I don't know, I haven't come across that. Mm -hmm. Most of them are coming to us because they are, they're going to an, uh, a class, an, uh, an English class somewhere. So they're, they're learning the basics, yeah. But you're right, this, I mean, a reading group, you need to know the basics. So some people do come to our class and um, they're at a very basic level. And it's, you can see it's a bit frustrating for them. Um, I think what ends up happening is they don't come back they'll stick to their English class. Daniel, you know? can I add something? One thing Daniel and I have struggled with, and I'm not sure we've resolved it 100%, is, is the purpose of the book club to get them to love reading and find it pleasurable and relaxing and fun, or is it you know, for them to perfect their English skills? And we were kind of talking about this on, on the way up here today. Um, yeah. You know, do we want to open two different levels? You know, and, and we ultimately decided that having, you know, a beginning level and an advanced level probably was going to be discouraging to the students who were at the more basic levels just because they seem to really benefit from, you know, that mix of, of levels that's, that's in the group. I have a question. You said the purpose of the book club is to see if the reading is pleasurable, reading, I mean, easy, relaxing, and what was the fourth one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. <laughs> I was just blabbering on. Any, um, any. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's, it's more um, 
we want it to be something that gives students confidence in, in their yeah. English skills rather than dividing them into, okay, this, you know, you're right. at level one and An then yeah. there's a level two and then a level. Okay. Another thing, like, yeah. you don't want to, we don't give tests or quizzes yeah, no. or nothing like that. And this, you might have that in a class, but in a reading group, no, none of that. It's yeah. intimidating. We want them to relax and because a lot of these people have never read a book before at all. So this is the first, this is their introduction to reading. And, they're, and I have some testimonials. I have several people who said this is the first time they're actually reading. So that's a big step for them. So if you, if you throw in tests and no. things, you know, grammars, it's not. Children's books. The reason why the vocabulary is just helping them how to pronounce it and not really like going to the definition. We'll go into the, no, we'll go into the definition. We'll make sure that, yeah, it's a new word. That's, that's one thing that we do focus on, new words. Yes. Um, any new words that they, that they don't know, they'll point out, and we'll make sure everybody knows the class, uh, that the class knows the word, the definition of it, and how it's used. And you, and you are bilingual? Yes. Okay, so then you, you're able to actually communicate with them. For example, yes, that does help. Yeah, that, that, that makes it a little difficult if you're not, if you don't speak their native, but we've had people, uh, their native language, but we have people from other countries that speak like Korean or some African language, and um, we communicate as the best way you can. Uh, you use your hands, <laughs> like, signals, phones, oh, they can look it up, yeah, they can use their phone, yeah, that's a big, thank you. Uh, there's many uh, translating uh, apps yeah, on the phone. Yeah, so that, that can help them. Um, let me see, and we're going to run out of time, so I'm going to have to wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to mention a few more activities. Uh, you can, to get discussion going, we talk about the, you can talk about the cover of the book. Does it match the inside of the book? Could Does it match the story? So I can see the, um, the San Antonio Gomez. Uh, oh, sure. And uh, you can talk about the vocabulary, their experience of reading the book. How did it feel? Did, were they, did it make them happy, sad? Uh, were they confused? Or was it a boring book? You know, how, how did they experience the book? Um, you can talk about the main character, the, the, the traits, the character traits. You know, um, what they liked about the character, what they disliked, what they would have done differently. You know, those sort of things will get the, the people in conversation. Yeah, and, uh, and it's interesting. It's, it's nice. Yes. Just one question. Uh, how successful are you? How successful is it? Yeah. And uh, what do you mean by successful? Like versus, uh, how do you, uh, well, it's two parts. How do you do your recruiting and what is your retention like? Oh, okay. Well, recruiting, they, they, they come in on their own. We have a lot. It's, there's a big need for this. Uh, that's what we're seeing. We don't even advertise. Do they, we ad Wait, I mean, they have, the library has flyers. Okay. So that's it. Yeah, in the library. Yeah. And, uh, it's mostly word of mouth. High retention. It keeps growing. When we first started, maybe, uh, I think I started with four people. And now, sometimes there's up to 12 in just six months. So you publicize it? Or? No, we don't publicize it. Okay. Okay, we're, looks like we're out of time, so I'm sorry. <laughs> we had a lot of questions, I didn't get to the end, so but. It, oh, it is 10 Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. You can send us an email. It.